Normally, if total credit adjusted for inflation grows by less than 2% a year, the U.S. economy falls into recession. But as we'll see below, that hasn't happened this time. Total credit adjusted for inflation has increased by less than 2% for the last eight quarters, but the economy continues to expand. Job growth remains strong, and inflation remains stubbornly above the Fed's 2% inflation target. Core PCE inflation, the measure of inflation that the Fed watches most closely, is still up 4. 7% from one year ago. At its most recent FOMC meeting, the Fed indicated that it believes it will have to hike interest rates twice more before the end of the year to bring inflation back down. Since that announcement, the stock market has become skittish, and with good reason. Higher interest rates will create an increasingly difficult environment for stocks and are almost certain to continue driving property prices lower. This video examines the most recent trends in credit growth. In particular, it focuses on two important developments revealed in the financial accounts of the United States for the first quarter of 2023. The abrupt slowdown in household sector debt and the record-setting expansion of GSE debt during the quarter. Both these developments would normally suggest a high probability of the U.S. going into recession in the near term. However, the video also offers an explanation as to why the economy has remained out of recession thus far, despite weak credit growth. If this explanation is correct, the divergence between weak credit growth and solid economic growth may persist. If it does, interest rates may have to move even higher than the Fed currently anticipates. The stock market is not prepared for the possibility of the federal funds rate moving up to 6%. If it does, the stock market could be in for a painful correction during the months ahead. This chart shows that total credit in the United States has now reached 95 trillion dollars. That's up from 13 trillion dollars in 1990 and 1 trillion dollars in 1964. So note that total credit is equal to total debt. So this represents the combined debt of all sectors of the economy. The year-on-year -year increase in total credit slowed to 4.6 trillion dollars in the first quarter of this year.